there's another type of attack that we need to be aware of, and that is script injection. Now, typically, script injection is only an issue when you take user input and you output that data as is in the browser. Now, right now, we really haven't been outputting information, but we eventually will because we have these posts that we want to display in the browser. So this is something that we need to look at, and it's something that we might be vulnerable with. So let's first of all run our application, and let's see what happens if we try to insert HTML into our form. So first of all, we need to log in. And after you log in, go to post slash new. Let's create a new post. Let's give this a title. It doesn't matter what it is. And let's just use some HTML. Now, if you wanted to, you could use a script element and put some JavaScript inside of that script element. But let's just use a P element and say that this has HTML. And then let's just submit the form as is. Now, this is something that is very nice. By default, ASP.NET is not going to allow us to accept HTML in a request. Now, it will let you submit a form that contains HTML, but look at where we get the exception. It's when we try to get the value of our post content field. This is where the exception is. So ASP.NET doesn't care that you submitted HTML, but it does care that you tried to retrieve that value that contains HTML. So we have a few options. We can turn off this validation, which is something that we really don't want to do because this is is nice. We can also bypass the validation for our content, which could be something that we want to do, but really still we want to protect ourselves from script injection. Now we could bypass this validation for our content field, and then we could strip out all of the script elements. But there's a third option. Instead of using HTML to format our posts, we could use something like Markdown. And this really isn't far-fetched because Markdown is used almost everywhere. So whenever we want to format a post, we could use Markdown. But then that gives us a problem. How do we render that Markdown as HTML whenever we are displaying the post in the browser? Well, that's very, very simple. We use a NuGet package. So let's go to our bin folder. Let's right click and we want to manage NuGet packages. And we want to look for a package called Markdown Sharp. This is the Markdown parser that is used on Stack Overflow. And it is very, very easy to use. So let's just install this. And let's close out of Manage NuGet Packages. And let's finally add a default.cshtml to the root of our website. So let's add a new item. This is going to be a content page and let's call this default.cshtml. Now we have a layout page for all of our content files. That is underscore site layout. So let's uncomment this line for the layout page and we will want to use tilde slash or if you hit the wrong key like I did, it will close that file. Let's open back up default.cshtml tilde slash underscore site layout cshtml. Let's then retrieve our posts from our post repository. So of our posts equals post repository dot get all. And since we are displaying these for anyone that wants to come to our website, we need to retrieve only those that are published. Now our only option is to specify an order by clause, but let's add a where clause. So let's go to app code. Let's go to our data folder and post repository, or you know, a better solution would be to have a method that simply returns all of the published posts. So let's add one. We want public static, it will return an I enumerable of dynamic, and we will call it get published posts. Now our select statement is going to look a lot like what we used for the get all method. We want to retrieve all of the fields for the post table, but we also want to get the tags. So let's grab this SQL statement and let's paste it inside of our get published posts method. Now we have almost everything that we need, but now we need to include the username of the author because now that we have that information, we need to display that not only whenever we are displaying the published posts, 
but just about everywhere else we display a post. Like for example, in our post list in the admin section, instead of showing the user ID, we should show the username. So I'm going to modify this SQL statement to include the username, and then I will do the rest of the SQL statements off screen. So after we left join our tags table, we want to enter join our users table, let's call it u, and we want to join on u.id equals to p.author ID. And then we want to select the username. So inside of our select statement, we want u.username. And the u dot is redundant here because username is a unique field. But because we were specific on all of the others, we'll just follow suit here. Now, this SQL statement is not complete because we want to select only the published posts. So we need to add a WHERE clause, and we want to say that WHERE DATE PUBLISHED is not null. And even that's not sufficient because we could set a DATE PUBLISHED for a future date. So we want where DATE PUBLISHED is not null, and DATE PUBLISHED is less than the current date, so GET DATE. And that will be our complete SQL statement for this method. Now to process this query, we will use that do get method and pass the SQL statement. But we will need to make some modifications to one of these methods because of the username. So if we look at do get, uh, we don't need to do anything here. We need to modify our create post object because now we will have a username. So we want to create that username and we want to set it to obj.username. So that will give us everything that we need. So we can go back to our default.cshtml and instead of calling the get all method, we want to call the get published posts method. Then we want to loop over these. So let's use a for each loop of our post in posts and let's wrap each post in a div element. Let's give it a class of post-container, and then we want the title. Let's use an h2 element. Let's set its class to post-title, and then we will output post.title. Then for the content, we can wrap that in a div element. Let's give it a class of post-content, and we want to take the content and run it through the markdown parser. But first of all, we need that parser. So let's create a variable called MD at the top of this page. And we want to use this markdown sharp. Actually, we need a new operator, markdown sharp dot markdown. This will give us an object that we can use to transform markdown into HTML. Now there are some options that you can set here and I'm really not familiar with any of them, but I think that the default options should give us what we want. Now we can't unfortunately just do md.transform and then pass in post.content because that is going to HTML encode the content. So we want to write raw HTML. So we need to use the HTML dot raw method and then pass in MD dot transform and then the content. Now, ideally we would have some other things here like the username, which we just went through some modifications to get. So I, well, no, we can do that later. We can also do the tags later. So let's go ahead and let's run this and let's see what we get. Well, first of all, we get some build errors. Let's see what the problem is. Post repository, not all code paths return a value. And I think I just called that do get. Yes, I did not return that. Okay, so now let's run this and our application should run. So at the default page, we should see our first post. And if we look at the HTML, we are going to see that we have our post and then we have a paragraph for that first post. So this Markdown Sharp library did its job. Well, there are a few more things that we need to do, but most of them are cosmetic. We of course need to start displaying more information whenever we display the posts in the browser. We also need to display an individual post, and we also need to go back to the admin section. We need to massage the markup that we have there, add some CSS and JavaScript to make that a little bit easier to use.
and we will do that in the next lesson.